district meeting and our subsequent precinct meetings. I see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of activists, a lot of new faces. It's going to be an exciting year as we go into another presidential cycle. Uh, show of hands if this is your first precinct meeting. Okay, excellent. Welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. And this is the first part of the grassroots of the Republican Party. That's why it's so important. There's an opening where you can have elections to fill those vacancies. Um, the only thing we're up against is on the precinct packets. I guess when they printed them, they used an old database. And so, like 146 is showing Jenny White as the chairman. So, it's, it needs to be re revamped. If there's an opening on your packet, we'll hold it. Our views and our issues. Thank you for blessing this country. And Lord, keep your hand on this country. Bless those people who are involved. Be with our military service men and women and those who are protecting this country. Lord, I want to thank you for. The blessings that you've given me and many of the people in this room that have have given their lives to to further the Republican Party and the values and the principles that we hold dear that are in line with your word the Bible thank you much and bless this meeting in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. great please stand as a flag there's there's an open precinct and then there's a precinct alternate which you guys will say well this is two precincts or two delegates, we're going to say these are our two precincts, or two delegates, and those are the only people that can attend the conference, the convention. So that's the decision. Usually for an open tent, and I bet, and uh, we, we recommend doing an open delegation because we want as many people to participate as possible, but that's a decision you guys make as a precinct, whether you want to go as an open delegation or as a, as a we don't have closed delegations, we have precinct alternate delegation. So that means for every delegate you'll have, you'll have one delegate. And Precinct 17. Precinct. Matt, yes. I don't know what. I've forgotten what mine is. Okay. Matt, do you want me to sign them? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. I'll look it up. 196. 198. 199. And put a section of chairs together and go through the packets. And then once those are done, we can turn it back in and then we'll have some special announcements and some counter stuff going forth. I'm going to bring that and half the old one room by myself included. Forgot what precinct point. Okay, if you don't know your precinct number, come up here and I'll get you guys assigned to the right place. What is it? Oh, that's your house district. Yeah, Jenny Priest. It's 196. I can get out. Yeah. 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 You are 196. Yeah. I think I might just say 196. Who has 196? Slide right in. Yeah, I got it. Oh, you know how you How did you so if you look here, so there's some here in this area. Probably go through the same. So we're 196. Uh, 196. Yeah. Especially since we're yeah. in the uh, presidential Joe, are you 196? Yeah. Right over here. Unless it's 16. Well, are you in the chair? No. Well, I'm actually for one or the other of us. I like the chair. I like the chair. <laughs> oh, no, you don't have to be. So. Amber. Amber? Yeah. yeah. This is Vincent. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, with this decision, they did. That's my son. Well, I thought we were going to go So you have three dollars. Have you been to one of these before? Are you a registered voter? Well, I think people so, are not yet. So. You're just oh, okay. So you're just yeah. observing? Yeah. It is right here. Well, you can still get the this is the official Oh, would you like a piece of paper to write? Oh, no, I can put it on my phone. Okay. 
That's the list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. April 16th. Can I go to put it back in there? Amber. 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 Uh, uh, is it at the Reed Center? Where? Uh, I thought it was at. I can't remember. I, I, I have it at home. I just haven't gotten it in my phone. Yes, sir. The county meeting on March 5th, where's that at? That is. From like a pri previous life. Oh, okay. Okay. So well, like a previous life, she and I are very, very close. Oh, good, right. good. So, so, and her mother died. Oh, in oh, 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 so, I am really your mom now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, that, that's, that's good. good. That's yeah. more for the. Well, yeah, yeah, we're very, very close. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I do because we're the next thing you have to be at B7, B8, and B9, and I'm not saying six. Don't really work. I didn't know that. We didn't know that. We didn't know that. We didn't know that. Somebody leave a message. One of our kids finally said, Mom, your message is now my daughter's already. I think we should be in a second. I said it. We need a land. It's my strange time. Speaking of exes, all that other stuff. He's not here. So he's not here. Well, let's get a point of order here. Not here. They stay in place until the next year. It's a two-year it's a two -year term. Uh, and so you elect whoever well, else needs to be elected. Yeah, there's a vacancy in there. All right. And then because Joe Reed, last year's president. We didn't know that our phone. No, I was not. Okay. I know Mike was, Mike was the chair. Yeah. Uh, he was chair last year. I think Mike was the only one. I think Mike was the only one. Or the car was the car. Yeah. 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 Doesn't sound familiar, so go ahead if you guys want to put somebody in there. The lot of to verify if they haven't vacated that seat. And then if they have vacated it, then we can put it in there. Oh, yeah. 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 No. <laughs> no, you do not. I, don't, I can't imagine them getting any discounts for me. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Am I going to have to do something? Who knows? But who knows? It'll, it all, it will, we will, we will let you know when the, when the republic is falling apart, we'll call you. All right, now. Are we going to have a youth coordinator? No, because we're, we're, we're out, we're, we're out of people. We're out of people. Okay, now. I, I move that all of us who are present and Mike Brake, who is not here currently, are all elect, duly elected delegates to the county convention. Uh, no. Second that. What's that mean? Second? No. I'm sorry? No. no, Mike passes. You are still precinct chair. He says no. Well, he is until next time. That's real pithy. <laughs> well, in, if, he, if he defaults, that's what... Then, then we have somebody to take his place. Yes, yes you are. All right. Now, Fran is a duly elected delegate to the 2006 county convention. Do we have a second? I second it. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay. You all are now delegates. Hate to do that to you, but we have to have those names written down. Here. Hate to do that to you. You may put everybody on here. Hate to do that to you. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, because we have more delegates than we have votes, I don't believe that we. No, we have four votes and we have more delegates. If Mike Brake is still on. Oh, gotcha. To the to the, to the, the yeah, yeah. state or county convention. Would you agree? I would agree. Fran, you agree? Yeah, did you know that? Okay, good. Everybody's agreeing. Okay, so the next thing is, is uh, does anybody want to be 
on the platform or resolution? At the state convention. At the county convention the first. County yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Do Do you understand the importance of the county platform? That's a lot of. Would you like to be? Yeah. I don't always agree with everything that's on. Well, that you would give. You you would give. Would you? That's why we're doing this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. But it's important if you disagree for your voice to be heard because there'll be other people that would also maybe hold your same views. Would you like to be? Okay. All right. All right. Here's what I would. Would you do me a favor? Write your name and address and and all that stuff that you've already written once, okay? Okay, this doesn't this is just for the plank statements. Oh a statement. Is that is that a statement? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I misread it. Oh, it is. You're absolutely right. I thought this so, was looking. So, as a group, do we have any? I'm sorry. So, as a group, do we have any recommendations? Oh, yeah. We could make them personal. Yeah. We don't have to all. Well, in every precinct meeting I've ever been to, they only give one, and then somebody. Yeah. Then, then you figure it out. I do not see. Uh, I don't see a uh, platform. Or a resolution currently. Okay. Thank you for doing this. It's been a big help. Okay. So Mike's not going to be here. He's on the way to the observatory. Okay. Do you have a platform? Is there anything that you want to speak to? No. Is there an issue you would like to speak to? Legalized marijuana, but that won't go over good. Would you? Solution from the floor, if you choose to do that. All right. Uh, let me see if I've got it all done here yet. The. Uh, Precinct contact report to be completed by the precinct secretary. <laughs> you ask. <laughs> you hear the secretary? Is that correct? I was just. I was. I was test. I was te I'm com completely confused here. Okay, great. Yeah, the precinct secretary is supposed to mail or deliver to the county chairman. The all the methods used to notify Republican voters in our precinct of our next precinct meeting. I'm going to give this form to you at the precinct meeting. We are to uh, have the official roll call, which we did. The official roll call to the county which we did. That was done, Mike Break and those that have been elected. Uh, verify that each delegate has, sum has submitted their voter ID form. The answer to that is we submitted those when they came in, okay? So I would say that's done. Elect open delegations or delegate alternates. I think we've done that. Open delegation, right. Submit the the platform planks, and we have we we discussed it. We haven't submitted anything, but we're we're well. I have nothing. Joe has nothing. I have nothing. Yeah, I can. Right now. Okay. Okay. So then we will. So we have nothing to submit. What about submission of changes to the rules to the Republican Party? I'm sorry? I'd have to sit there and go through them. You know what, though? If at the next precinct meeting, if I don't think anybody's ever, ever gone through this with me and said, I don't think anybody, and it sounds like this might be a first for you. I mean, I've gone through with a delegate before, whatever, but... And I, too, but I don't remember going through this, because I thought you just got that at the convention when you got there. Well, you probably... Because they read it all off, and you have to agree to it or not agree to it, and that's when you object and say, I don't agree with that rule, so then we bring it to a vote and all that. That's the way I've... It's been... So let's
Listen to this. Well, the next time we meet, okay, let's just grab a, 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 at the convention, county or state, let's grab the rules. And, and bring them to the secretary, bring, the, bring a copy of the rules. And, and let's all just look at it and, and think what we are what we don't like and what we want to change. We'll do that for them. We'll, we'll shake them up the next time. Is that good? I got a question. The, yes, ma'am. Um, this convention right here, is there, is there something we're going to be voting on at that? Yes, ma'am. What do you vote on at that? Well, at, at the county convention, I'll, I'll go through that. Are we okay? officials and societies it's over the election of the county chair or the convention chair county chair is over the convention chair the county chairman must pass to the state chairman any platform or changes to the rule, rules of the Republican Party adopted by the county convention any person wishing to be a delegate any person sure got loud didn't it any person wishing to be a delegate State convention. A committee that verifies you for the convention. Yes, ma'am. And that will assure that you he, he wouldn't have let us sign in. He couldn't, he couldn't find my name on there. He had my husband's on. I don't have it with me. It's it down the street of my house. But your driver's license? I didn't. We walked down here. Yeah. But my husband. I have a voter registration card. Oh, okay. Card. Just ask it. Yeah. Then they will check that at the convention. Okay. Yeah. But but I would be proactive because mistakes are made by humans. Okay. And so I would be proactive and um, make. Talk about his movie, Thirteen Hours. Uh, there we've been involving Benghazi. So if you haven't had a chance to, to read up on it, it's a good movie. Uh, come out and see us. We have the dinner. We also have live auction items, and then he'll be our keynote speaker. So that is on February 18th at 6 o'clock at Quaker Tuesday and now a couple of times. So they got us a lot more traction on the presidential scene. So it was, it was a nice change. Um, March 5th is the county convention. It'll be a Christian heritage there in, uh, on Sunny Lane. And they'll post the information on registration and let you guys know. I know the state does it. I know the county's looking at it. Uh, I don't know if they have the logistics worked out yet. What time is that? Uh, 9 o'clock is when it gavels in. The convention starts, but you have to be a registration by 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the state party convention. Um, typically, how it works those that haven't participated before if you go to the county convention, you automatically move over to the fifth district convention and to the state convention. So it's important that you make it to the county convention. If you can make it to the county convention for some reason and you were elected a delegate, you need to make sure you reach out to me or to Evelyn and Chair and Vice Chair. What's the Facebook page called? It's Oklahoma County Republicans. And then I think the website is OKC. OKCO. Yeah. OKC still links over, but OKCO. GOP.com. And she has form policy experience from serving as the chairman of the advisory committee for the CIA, also advising the NSA, several secretaries of defense, secretary of state, as well as secretary of homeland defense for decades. And she's also, as the CEO of Hewlett Packard. Uh, you know, they did business in over a hundred different countries. Why not to Native Americans? From District 85. That's what the intention of it is for. With this new political cycle coming up, we've got some new people that are going to be running for office. It's going to be a good time to get to know them in the future because we're going to ask them to come and, and talk to us uh, on individual weekends. And we would love to have you come just to sit down and talk about the issues. We gripe, bitch, and complain, but we, uh, we, it, it's, it's good to get to know other people in District 85. And we would love to have anybody. It's open to everybody. Some, some people from Canadian County come, some people from, from all over. The, the, be there, you'll see, uh, see us set up, and we just eat breakfast, talk, and, and carry on, and, and then we go on our merry way. But we want to encourage that because we have precincts that have no leadership. And this is a good way to get those people involved so that we can take this district back from where it is right now. Okay? That's it. Um, well, a, a family friend, um, Bill Snipes. Oh, okay. Snipes' dad really is the godfather of the Republican Party in the county. Uh, do you know the Snipes' story? I've heard that name before. I know, I know those people are going to want to. Blood, so, like you believe. Okay, wait, say, say it again. Ken Blood. Okay. And um, who are you supporting this, this time around? Do you know yet? 
for, for the president? For the presidency. The answer is undecided, but I'm leaning towards Cruz. What is it about Senator Cruz that you like? Proven, proven conservative, um, doesn't waver. I like Rubio, but I'm not sure that Rubio, um, you know, I'm not sure he's tested. I'm not sure he, because everything that I see in politics is, um, is like an acid bath. All of your values are, are, are put up for sale or tested. And so, you know, uh, you got to know what you believe and you got to be willing to die for what you believe in. That's my belief. What do you think about the direction of the party? Good group of candidates this year. Yeah, there are good groups. How do you feel just about the overall direction of the party? Well, it sure beats um, the, the, the future prisoner, uh, uh, the Clinton uh, Crime Foundation, as, as it's been referred to. Uh, and uh, who wants a communist? Uh, who wants Bernie Sanders in there? But, but, but the misled. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, they beat those two hands down. Now, whether they can overcome the money machine, I don't know. What do you think about Trump? He's obviously made a lot of noise this year. Trump, I, I've I've actually heard him speak live in Las Vegas, and uh, I like a lot of what he says. Like a lot of what he says, I question some of the things that he says, and I'm not sure I can trust him. That's the reason that. I'm not on board with him. Now, I, I could be wrong, but, you know, I'm a businessman, and any guy who goes bankrupt four times, some, somebody got screwed in that right, right. four, four, he left He left a lot of money, you know, and I'm not, and, so, and I've, seen, I've seen business deals where, we got, a, we got some travelers. I've I've seen some business deals where the businessman makes the deal because he knows he's going to go bankrupt and he gets all the assets for nothing. So, sure seems uh, suspicious to me. You feel like he's a real conservative, or is there some question? I, well, there's a question. Absolutely, there's a question. Uh, don't I wish I knew for certain, um, but I'm not sure how much he's playing uh, playing the public. Are you a lifelong Republican? Uh, yes, I actually am. My, uh, uh, my grandfather uh, was in the Truman administration and played cards in the basement of the White House with uh, Truman and, and Sam Rayburn and the rest. But, uh, but uh, yes, I'm a Would, would you describe yourself as an activist? And in, in, in what I mean by coming out and trying to put these meetings, and because turnout in your precinct was relatively small, but are you an activist? Have you come out before? I've, I've been an activist uh, in the past. I've kind of laid that down while I was raising a family. And uh, so uh, I, I, I'm back at the urging of, of a friend. What kind of business are you? Are you, are you Technology. Technology. We do uh, phone systems, camera systems, uh, access. We do everything computer guys don't like to do. Okay. And we do computers. Okay. And my last question is just kind of your thoughts. You've just broken, you know, uh, this finished this uh, district meeting here. What was your thought today what, from what you heard and what you saw? Um, you know, uh, uh, it, it seems like uh, the people that were here are, are the kind of people that you'd want to be your neighbors, okay? Uh, good people. Uh, they have little different uh, slants of uh, views on. Uh, on uh, on the issues, but they're not that far separated. Ken, thanks for talking to us. My pleasure. Can I get your phone number? And it's, uh, sp spell it if you would, please. J O F U D G E, like chocolate candy. <laughs> okay. Um, Joe, talk a little bit about uh, who you're supporting this, this year for president. Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. I've got several people. I know I'm not supporting Bernie or Hillary. I, I, that's and, a shock to me. <laughs> I knew that you'd come as a shock to you. Um, so you, you, you're still making up your mind? Anyway. Right, you need right. I have, um, uh, I'm, I lean very uh, favorably to 
Rubio and Cruz and Carly. Not necessarily in that order, but those are, are my three favorites of the group. I'm sorry, what are some issues that are... Dr. Carson was my primary guy, but he seems to be falling in the fold, so I'm trying to get into one of the top pullers. A lot of choices. Yes, there are. And we're going to see what happens in New Hampshire because everybody was greatly surprised at what happened in Iowa, so we may have some more surprises there. How do you feel about the direction of the party, the Republican Party? Do you feel pretty good about it right now? Well, I think we had too many candidates running for office this year, although we can't deny anybody the opportunity to run. But I think it's hurt our chances. We need to get it narrowed down because it's spread. Spreading is too thin. Uh, any issues that what are what are some of the key issues for you this year? Oh, I pretty well agree with the, pretty well what they're saying. And uh, security is a, a definitely an issue. And uh, the debt is just so out of hand; it's unreal. <coughs> I have great grandchildren. I'd like to see yeah. <laughs> have a good, safe, and financially secure country. What do you think? Um, who are some of the past Republican presidents that you've, you've enjoyed voting for, voting for, and have supported? Uh, of course, Ronald Reagan comes to mind immediately. But one of my favorites was George Bush, Senior, and both of them. But I personally got acquainted with George in Texas because we lived in Texas at that time and he is quite a character, quite a, a honest, his behavior in the wars that we were in show his type of character. <laughs> kind of top three candidates you have in your mind right now. What is it about those three that kind of appeal to you as candidates? Uh, they're just, their sincerity and honesty and and what I, I, I just am judging that they would, I think, be the most representative of our country. On a scale of one to 10, one being not important, 10 being extremely important, how would you rate this upcoming presidential election? Oh, I think it's all important. I think our country is going down hell in so many ways, and if we don't get a good, strong, conservative Republican elected, it will continue down the tubes. And I am 80 years old, and I've seen a whole bunch. I've lived through World War II, Vietnam, and of course all the Gulf Wars that we are still in, but we're not in. But we've got to come. We've got to have somebody at the helm that knows what they're doing. And I don't presently don't think the past eight years have been productive for our way of government in the United States. Can you tell us just a little bit about about yourself? Oh, myself. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I'm a proud 80-year-old, and I have a mother of five children, 16 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Those are why I am so strongly in favor of getting a strong government that will provide them with the happy life that I've led all these years. Have you been active before in, in these party politics? Yes, I am. I'm very active in the Oklahoma City Republican Women's Association. And I was in Texas when I was in Texas and a delegate to the Texas Convention and been delegate to the Oklahoma Conventions. And I said I got, I got in, interested in becoming, going from Democrat to a Republican when I was in college and I had a college professor who <laughs> convinced me that I didn't want anything to do further with the Democratic Party. <laughs> and that was a long time ago, kids. <laughs> so you, you were at one time a Democrat, right? Oh, yes, yes, and my father was an elected Democrat official of the state of Oklahoma. So what did your father say when uh, you told him you were going to switch he parties? He said, just don't tell my friends about it. <laughs> How would you describe the precinct you live in? Oh, I have a very lovely precinct that we live in. It's in this immediate area. 
we're, we're serviced by all the major highways and Belle Isle Library and Shepherd Mall, I mean, uh, uh, Penn Square, and um, it, it's just a great place to live. Very quiet, very family oriented homeowners in this area. Someone who's been active in, in um, politics, mm -hmm. is there anything that feels different to you about this election versus past elections, um, past presidential elections? And, and the only thing is this huge field, this humongous field of people. I <laughs> Usually we have three or four that are interested, and then you get it down to about two. Yeah. But this thing, and it just keeps going on and on and on, and nobody wants to drop out. Right. There's rumors of people dropping out, but they haven't. I think it'll whittle down a little bit. I think here. it will, too. It's the, the New Hampshire is going to be a real telling point, I think. Well, Joe, I, that's mm -hmm. all I had for you. I really appreciate your time. Thanks You're very welcome. Can I get your phone? The very first thing we do is we yeah, uh, pronounce your name and then spell it, please. Okay, it's Fran Ferrari, F-E-R-R-A-R-I. Or at least. Well, should have been, should have been, so you should have okay. Been. Um, Fran, do you mind if I ask your agent, would you, would you tell us a little bit about, okay. about yourself? Okay, I'm 61. I, um, I'm an adopted Okie. So I'm originally from Pittsburgh. And uh, in fact, I uh, did an experiment on myself last year. I moved back to Erie County and to see if I wanted to move back permanently. And even though it was Tom Ridge country, the Republican Party there was just really quiet and not very active. So, and it, well, I, was, I, I loved working at the university there, but I decided to move back. I liked Oklahoma a lot. And, uh, and lo some of it too was to become involved, more involved with the politics. I'd been involved before, but that was something that I thought, especially with the presidential election, and uh, I wanted to get more involved this year especially. What has your involvement been like with the politics in the past? In the past, with the precinct, I've been pretty active in a couple of women's politic groups and uh, just volunteering for various candidates I would support. I stuff a mean envelope. That's it. You mentioned working That's for a college in, in Pennsylvania. Right. Okay. Do, you, do you still work for? I work for um, the Health Science Center right now and it's a program for infants with developmental delay at risk for developmental delays in the NICU so it's a it's, I work for the university at the Health Science Center but we do our work in the children's hospital in the NICU and we identify family, babies who are born who are at high risk for neurodevelopmental delays and help assist them with when, once they leave the NICU. Is there one or two, maybe even three, of, of the Republican Party platforms that you most uh, vigorously identify with or support? Um, oh, boy. I'd have to go over them right now. I can't think right off the bat. Well, but typically, I mean, like, but, uh, you know, economics, uh, the social issues. What are, what are some of the things that draw you really strongly to the Republican Party? Uh, the social, the, the, the whole sense of responsibility. I, um, I'm probably new to being Republican, maybe 15 years. I had always been independent. And uh, part of it, because my first political memory is my mother and father arguing over the Kennedy-Nixon debate. My dad was a Nixon, was Republican, my mother was Democrat. So being the good radical child, I, I, uh, signed up as independent, pissed, pissed them both off. So, and so I was that you know, throughout my whole life. And yes, I missed out on all the, the uh, primaries. But one day, and I was telling you, I'm not a morning person, but I wake up to the news, which may not be a good idea. And um, Al Gore was on talking about poor Ms. Smith, who's 25 and has five children, and how she was entitled to my support. Well, my uncensored morning mouth said all sorts of stuff that she was entitled to, I guess to start out was closing her legs. But, um, and so anyway, after that, morn that morning, I called a friend of mine. I says, take me, I, I said, you got to come because somebody's got to witness this. I have decided because of Al Gore to become a Republican because I, I just could not believe in that, that level of responsibility. 
of or probably irresponsibility. And I think that was one of the things the Republican Party that did that sense of responsibility, working hard, uh, still supporting. I guess the, maybe it's an old-fashioned vision of the American dream: if you work hard, you'll get somewhere. Whereas this other version of the American dream is: be pitiful, be a victim, be you know, find some some category to label you so you can be entitled to something without doing anything. Yeah, and then that was that was probably one of my main pushes. I mean, I can't say I agree a hundred percent. I don't. I'm pretty realistic, but but I would still rather be Republican than even independent. So. What do you think of the field of candidates, uh, Republican candidates, in this this election? Um, some of them need to go home. First off, it's too many. They can it, because it was such a critical. Election, especially with Hillary Clinton on board, I think, I think there's there, we spent too much time playing nursery school games, and we should have just gone straight for the juggler. Let's let's a more aggressive approach, but they're up there. You know, the you know hopefully of the candidates we'll find one strong enough, because really at this point I don't. Yeah, I, I, Hillary or Bernie to me seems a little too dangerous. And Is there one right now that you are supporting? Uh, let's see. I think I like Rubio. I like Cruz. I like Fiorino. Um, but I, I that I can't say it's really one I'm really pushing right right now. And, uh, is there a reason why not in the three you named are kind of the non non establishment Republicans? Is that, um, are you, is that any re is there is that on purpose? I mean, I could use the same reason people voted for Obama. I look at you know coming from an Italian family, they're very that's a Latin based family. Oh, well, Cruz and Rubio look like my family. I mean, that's not a good reason to vote for somebody though. And I think probably some of their their ideas are a little more familiar. I'm more familiar with. I understand what it's like being a product of immigrant families. Okay, I understand that the American flag means a lot to me because I have family that chose to live here, chose become to become citizens. So the I guess the immigration topic is very critical to me, and because because of that, and I mean I even have dogs that are products of immigrants. So. If they can, if they can import German shepherds legally, if my family can come here legally, I don't, you know, it's, it can't be that hard. And if it's that hard, I don't know. I just, I have some real radical th th topics about. The, kind of the big story this year has been Mr. Trump. What are your thoughts on, on him? He's really, he's he's real funny, but he's kind of like. The appetizer to the main course, yeah, let's laugh, but let's get on to, you know, the meal for the substance. And, uh, I mean, I'm hoping he drops out somewhere along the line, but I don't, I, ego-wise, I don't think he will. That's what scares me, though. Do you think he's and, attracted a lot of people or brought a lot of attention to the Republican Party this time? I think he has. One of the things I'm really hoping, though, is that, pro I, I keep hearing how he appeals to, and I, and I think the, derogatory term used, he appeals to a lot of redneck type people. What I'm hoping is that those people are gonna, will get out and vote then. So that's what I'm hoping. And I'm, I'm hoping everybody who is alive votes. I don't want any more pe dead people voting. So I, that's my only controversy or conspiracy I believe in. But um. This is the last That's, question I have, but mm -hmm. how would you describe, and I apologize if, you, if you've been asked this, but how would you describe your precinct just from a Our precinct? point of view, your, your area you live in, your, your block? It's, my neighborhood, I chose to live there, a lot of the ways, it reminded me of the neighborhood where I grew up in Pittsburgh, um, but I like, there's a real mix. And it's 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 very much in a neighborhood where people I don't know, say have earned to live there. I know sometimes I've mentioned where I live, and people make the comment "must be nice," which that that expression is kind of offensive because yes, it is nice that I've made decisions that to earn money to to buy or a house where I would like to live. That is nice, 
and that's based on my and my choices. But it, but it is, it is a nice neighborhood. People walk. People walk dogs. Their kids. Uh, it, it's it, it's probably more traditional than what you see in a lot of different communities. I'd say. When you said um, one, one way you described, it, you said it's a real mix. Now, do you mean that? Tell me, describe that a little more. You mean it by age factor, gender, uh, nationality? What, what, what's your uh, real mix? Let's see. When we go to our our neighborhood uh, our neighborhood party. There's the, yeah the age range. There's a real age range. There's you know there's single professional people. There are you know, families. There are retirees. Uh, I, a lot of the retirees live there till till they pass away, and but then then they pass away, and there's new families come in. So, so I guess it's, it's that it's it's a real cross section, uh, gender. I mean, even race wise, there's kind of a there's a mix, and uh, so and and I like, I really like the neighborhood. It like I said it's it reminds me a lot of where I grew up in Pittsburgh, and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Thank you guys. This is a good article. Talk.